Savior to all of my father's children. Join me, if you will, in Matthew's gospel, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Easy book to find, first book in the New Testament. Easy chapter to find, second chapter in the book. Easy verses to find, first two verses of the chapter. Matthew's gospel, chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 when you find it let me know by saying amen. amen if you're still looking let me know by saying wait on me amen heard a bunch of amens and no waits that means we're ready to hear from heaven amen, amen. the bible says now when jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he, he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we are come to worship him. Is that not what your Bible says? By the power of the Holy Spirit, from the aid of your prayers for about 15 minutes of your time I want to use for a topic we've come to worship him Amen. take your seats and pray with me for just a little while eternal God and our father our Lord and our Savior it is preaching time again master and again as always we need the inspiration and power of your Holy Spirit Father, first and foremost, I pray that Terrence Grooms decrease and that Jesus Christ might increase, that your name be magnified, your people be edified, and in the end, some soul might be saved. Father, I pray that you make me a clean conduit of your word. Cleanse me from the innermost parts of my being to the outermost parts of my soul, that your word will flow through freely and unencumbered. Bless your people, Lord, that your word will fall on fertile ground, that believers are made stronger and non-believers come into the amazing grace of Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost, have free reign in this place that we might do your work and your will. Rebuke the adversary that we might be successful in this journey. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We've come to worship him. Brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that there are many stories that we talk about in the Bible when it comes down to the Christmas season. There are times when we deal with the story of the visitation of the shepherds as they come and recognize the baby Jesus for the very first time. There are times we acknowledge the virgin birth by remembering what transpired in Mary's life, that even before her marriage was consummated, she found herself with child, and that child was the baby Jesus. We are understanding about stories where Mary and 
and, and Elizabeth come together and because Mary was impregnated with our Savior, the baby John inside of Elizabeth leaped within her womb. All of those stories ought to excite us and incite us that we might come and give God great, great praise in this season. But I want you to understand that when I think about all of the Christmas narratives, uh, this particular passage happens to be my personal favorite. Uh, when I think about every Christmas story that is told, uh, this one has a tendency to have a little bit more meaning to me. Uh, and the reason why this particular passage has just a little more, bit more oomph in my spirit uh, is because when I look at what transpires in this story, uh, it reminds me that the world was looking for Jesus. Uh, can I work with that just a little bit? Uh, because in this particular passage, what we find is not Hebrew men looking for Jesus. Uh, what we find are not people that are of the Sadducees, Pharisees, or the scribes. Uh, we don't see any of the 12 tribes of Israel. They are not descendants of Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. No, these are wise men from the east. Uh, they come from a foreign land and a foreign country. Uh, they come from a place that did not worship God on a regular basis, uh, but they knew God existed. Uh, when I look at this passage, uh, this passage tells me uh, that not only was uh, the Jews looking for Jesus, uh, but the world is looking for Jesus. Uh, we need to understand this Sunday morning that, that God is bigger than our worship experience. Uh, we need to realize that we are not just the only ones looking for Jesus. Uh, the world is looking for Jesus. Uh, can I preach the way I feel this Sunday morning? Uh, they, the world might understand uh, that they need a Savior, but don't know what the Savior looks like. Uh, they might try to find their rescue in wine, women, and song. Uh, but I stopped by to tell you this Sunday morning, uh, what the world is really looking for is an encounter with Jesus Christ. Uh, don't fool yourself uh, and think we, we got them all wrapped up to ourselves. Uh, there's somebody on the outside uh, need the encounter that you already have. Uh, these wise men tell us uh, that the world needs a Savior. Can I work with the wise men for just a moment? Because the Bible reminds us that these men came from the east of Jerusalem. Uh, they came from the land that most people think of as Persia. Uh, now think about what transpired in that place. Uh, Persia was the place that took over Babylon. Uh, Babylon was the place that Daniel uh, was taken into captivity. Uh, and I want you to understand that while Daniel was in captivity, he never stopped worshiping and praising his God. The Bible declared that Daniel had such favor that he had, had reigned uh, over the entire nation. Uh, they tried him uh, to lead and to teach uh, and so what Daniel did uh, was taught them uh, the things and ways of God. Uh, Daniel taught them uh, that the Messiah was coming. Uh, the Bible reminds us uh, that God has told us uh, that no matter where we are we got to leave a residue of Jesus where we've been. Uh, we got to remind people uh, that no matter how dark the night, uh, we got to tell them that Jesus is the only way out. Uh, we got to understand uh, that no matter our situation or circumstance uh, we got to preach Jesus uh, that when we come out, uh, they can find their way out. Uh, while Daniel was in captivity, uh, Daniel taught about the prophecy of the coming Messiah. And now we're decades later, uh, centuries later, and they decided, I see the star. When I look at this passage, not only does it tell us that the world is looking for Jesus, but this passage tells us that we've got to recognize that there are some signs that needs to be known. When I look at this passage, they said the reason why we know he's coming, uh, we look up and we saw the star. Uh, now you got to go back in the book of Genesis. Uh, in Genesis, God reminds us that he gave us the stars uh, that we might understand times and seasons, years uh, and situations. Uh, and so when God gave the stars, uh, those stars were to serve as a warning sign uh, of when God was about to do something. Uh, now this one particular time, uh, God is telling the world uh, that you will know the Savior is coming uh, by the way I put the star in the sky. Uh, they look up in the star uh, and recognize the signs of the time. Uh, can I park right there for a moment? Because uh, the problem that we have in the church uh, is we're not recognizing the signs of the time. Uh, they saw the star uh, that said Jesus is on the way. Uh, well, church, I got to tell you, uh, the stars have aligned one more time, uh, and we ought to be looking up uh, knowing that the Savior is on his way back. Uh, we ought to be looking up uh, expecting the coming of our Lord. Uh, we ought to be looking up, uh, knowing that one day uh, he shall return, uh, not as a baby in a manger, uh, but as the great I am, uh, not through the womb of a virgin, uh, but coming back in 
the clouds, uh, not as a sacrificial lamb, uh, but as the all-powerful God. Uh, we got to recognize the signs. I think the problem is the church is no longer looking up. The church is just looking in. Looking inward to the things that we want from God. Looking inward at the troubles that we have in this life. Looking inward at the issues that we have with each other. Baby, every now and again, don't look in. Just look up. Because uh, whatever's in you is going to be in you. Uh, but if you look up, uh, you can see your help. Uh, if you look up, uh, your direction will change. Uh, if you look up, uh, you will find your hope. Uh, the time for the church uh, to stop looking in uh, and start looking up. Uh, they looked up and saw the star. These wise men from the east decided to make a journey because they saw a star and the star told them that the Savior was coming. Can I talk about the wise men for just a little bit longer? Because historians have given these wise men a name. Uh, they think that they understand that one of them was the name of Casper, uh, who was actually an African king that had journeyed through Persia. Uh, they named Malchor and Belshazzar. Uh, these were men of great substance. Uh, these were men that were not uh, puny and paltry, uh, but these were men that had means. Uh, and you need to understand something, uh, that when we look at this story, uh, this story tells us that Jesus was not just the Jesus of one color. He was the color of everybody. Yes. Yes, there's an African presence in the Bible, uh, and it's all through the Bible. Uh, and I'm so glad uh, that Jesus didn't come from one color. Uh, he came from all colors. Uh, he came from the Africans uh, and the Persians. Uh, he came from the Asians uh, and the Europeans. Uh, he came for the Germans uh, and the French. Uh, he came for the Indians uh, and the Americans. Uh, this passage tells me uh, he's not just Jesus of the Jews. Uh, he's Jesus of everybody. You got to understand something about the times because men of that time understood that if we're going to travel, we got to protect ourselves in the midst of the travel. And so they never traveled alone, men of this stature. These were men of great report. Uh, these were men that had great substance. Uh, these were men that had it going on. Uh, and so when they traveled, they didn't travel by themselves. Uh, they had an entourage with them uh, because they needed protection uh, from the dangers around them. Uh, they needed protection uh, from the thieves and robbers. Uh, they needed protection uh, from the issues that would happen uh, if they fell by themselves. Uh, what am I trying to tell you? Listen to what happened. Uh, they were on their way to worship. Uh, and they protected their worship. Uh, we got to learn uh, that when we get ready for worship, uh, we got to protect our worship uh, because the devil wants to kill, steal, and destroy. You got to protect your worship. Uh, he wants to distract your mind. Uh, you got to protect your worship. Uh, he wants to rob you of your joy. Uh, you got to protect your worship. Uh, how do you protect your worship? Uh, you surround yourself uh, with the right folk uh, that your worship can be protected. Uh, you surround yourself uh, with folk that pray like you. Uh, sing to the God that you sing to. Uh, trust the word that you trust. Uh, surround yourself uh, so that you can protect your worship. These men had an agenda and their agenda was to worship. Can I give you another one? Because they came to worship, their worship was intentional. You see, when your worship is intentional, you just don't show up to worship. You get ready to worship. You see, that didn't just all of a sudden get up on the morning and say, we're going to go where Jesus is. Uh, they say, no, we got to get ready. Uh, we got to make sure our bags are packed. We got to make sure our camels are ready. We got to make sure the crew is together because we're going to worship. Uh, I don't want to leave anything to accident or incident. Uh, we're going to worship. Uh, we got to get our road right. right. Uh, we got to get our substance right. Uh, we got to get our mind right. Uh, can I preach it the way I feel? Uh, we got to start getting ready. Uh, and not just on Sunday morning. Uh, let me give you the Terrence Groom's way because uh, when it's time for worship, uh, on Monday, uh, I'm thinking about the goodness of God. Uh, on Tuesday, uh, grace and mercy meet me at the table. Uh, on Wednesday, uh, I find myself in his favor. Uh, on Thursday, uh, I find a heart of thanksgiving. Uh, on Friday, uh, the anticipation build. Uh, on Saturday, uh, I'm in my prayer closet because when Sunday comes, uh, I'm ready uh, to have a worship encounter. Uh, you got to be intentional with your worship. These men were intentional 
went their worship. And they decided that they were going to go and worship Jesus. Can I walk the story before I get ready to close? In this particular passage, the Bible declared that they looked up and saw the star. And since they saw the star, they decided to follow until they got to where Jesus was. And when they came into the town of Bethlehem, they stopped by Herod, who was the king of the region, and said, we recognize that the king of the Jews is born. We understand that he who we have been looking for has now showed up. Show us where he is that we might go and worship him. And I want you to understand that that anytime you get ready to worship, uh, the devil is going to throw some traps your way. Uh, anytime you get ready to worship, uh, the devil is going to throw some distractions your way. Uh, anytime you get ready to worship, uh, the devil is going to throw some pitfalls your way. Uh, you know the story. Uh, Herod didn't want to worship. Uh, he wanted to destroy that which we worship. Uh, he told them, when you get to where Jesus is, uh, let me know also uh, that I may worship him. Uh, what am I trying to tell you? Uh, when you get ready to worship, uh, some folk going to try and take your mind off of God. When you get ready to worship, uh, the devil going to try and pull your attention from God. When you get ready to worship, uh, the devil's going to make you try and find something else to do uh, other than be with God. But the devil is a liar. When it's time for worship, uh, my mind is fixed. Their worship was intentional. Their worship, worship was purposeful. And they understood that there might be distractions along the way. And so they were determined not to allow the distractions to hinder them from their worship. Well, we don't understand how the story goes. They leave Herod's house, uh, follow the star, and then they get to the place where Jesus is. Uh, and they find this little toddler uh, running around, uh, and they recognize they are in the presence of greatness. Uh, they find this little toddler uh, still clinging to his mother's coattail, uh, and they realize who they're worshiping. Uh, they find this little toddler, uh, and they realize uh, we have come to the place of our worship. Uh, and they decided, uh, let's worship him, uh, and we're going to worship him for three reasons. Uh, and I'm going to take my seat. Uh, you got to understand that they gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That spoke to the three reasons why they worshiped him. First of all, we got to deal with the gold because they didn't present that as the first gift. Uh, whenever a king went to another king's territory, he would offer a sacrifice of gold to show homage and respect to who he was. Uh, and so when they came to Jesus uh, and they saw that little baby uh, running around, uh, they did not see the baby. Uh, they saw the king of kings. Uh, they did not see the baby. Uh, they saw he who had authority over Herod. Uh, they did not see the baby. Uh, they say, saw he who had authority over their soul. Uh, and so when they bowed down and gave him gold. Uh, they're telling them, uh, I'm worshiping my king. Uh, can I preach the way I feel? Because uh, when I think about my king, uh, my king gives me protection. Uh, when I think about my king, uh, my king gives me direction. Uh, when I think about my king, uh, my king gives me provision. Uh, when I think about my king, uh, my king gives me comfort. Uh, I come to worship uh, my king. Uh, he's the king of kings. Uh, he's the author and finisher of my faith. Uh, we come the worship they worshiped him as king we got to realize when we come to this place we come to worship the king I know the choir sound good but we come to worship the king I know you're used to looking at me but we come to worship the king. I know we get used to seeing each other, but we come to worship the king. Uh, baby, when we come to worship, uh, I'm not coming to see the man upstairs. Uh, I'm coming to see my king. Uh, I'm not coming to see just anybody. Uh, I'm coming to see my king. Uh, I came to worship. They offered him gold because he was king. But they offered him frankincense because he was God. 
You see, frankincense was an aroma and a fragrance that they offered to the gods because they were bowing down in homage and worshiping unto the God. And so when they came to baby Jesus, they didn't see a toddler. They saw he who spoke this world out into existence out of nothing. When they saw baby Jesus, they didn't see the one that came in swaddling clothing. They saw the one that holds the whole world in his hands. When they saw Jesus, they didn't see the one who had to learn how to walk. They saw the one that put the breath in Adam. I stopped by to tell you, when we come to worship, he's not just my king. He is my God. He's my creator and my sustainer. He's my strong tower and my peace. I worship him because he's God. We've come to worship and we worship him because he's king. We come to worship him because he's God. Not a God. The God. You see, the Romans had a lot of gods. They would worship the God of the sun and the God of the moon, the God of fertility and the God of rain, the God of the earth and the God of the sea. Uh, but the problem with their gods uh, is their gods were just dead. Uh, they couldn't bring life to anything, uh, couldn't bring help to anybody. Uh, but when Jesus showed up, uh, they recognized, uh, I'm worshiping the light uh, and salvation. Uh, I'm worshiping the breath uh, and the strength. Uh, I'm worshiping God Almighty. Uh, I got to worship him uh, because he's God all by himself. Uh, it's not Buddha. It's Jesus. Uh, it's not Muhammad. Uh, it's Jesus. Uh, I worship uh, the King of Kings, uh, the Lord of Lords, uh, and the one and only God. They gave him gold because he was king. They gave him frankincense because he was God. But then they gave him myrrh. This spice was used for the embalming of the deceased. Myrrh was an interesting spice that was not only used in the anointing oil, but it was also given to those who were about to be sacrificed and die, that it might soothe and ease their pain. And so I stopped by to remind you when they looked at him, they didn't just worship him as king. Uh, they didn't just worship him as God. But when they gave him the myrrh, uh, they looked forward to Isaiah. Uh, when Isaiah said he was wounded uh, for our transgressions uh, and he was bruised uh, for our iniquities. Uh, and the chastisement of our peace uh, is upon him. Uh, and by his stripes, uh, we are healed. Uh, when they gave him the myrrh, uh, they didn't see Mary's baby. Uh, they saw the sacrificial lamb. Uh, when they gave him the myrrh, uh, they didn't see the manger. Uh, they saw the cross. Uh, when they see the myrrh, uh, they didn't see the swaddling clothes. Uh, they saw the crown of thorns. Uh, why do we worship him? Uh, we worship him because uh, he died uh, for our sins. Uh, we worship him because uh, he's the only one uh, that can wash away our sins. Uh, we worship him because uh, he is the propitiation. Uh, he is the payment. Uh, he is the exonerator. We worship him because he's our savior. They told Herod, we come to worship him because he's king. We come to worship him because he's God. We come to worship him because he's savior. Can I give you two freebies? Their worship encounter was not complete until they met him face to face. We don't understand that the object of worship is not just to sing your song. The object of worship is not just to get your praise on. The object of worship is not just to hear me preach. The object of worship uh, is not just to give your offering. Uh, baby, you got to understand uh, that when you come to worship, uh, there's only one thing on your mind. Uh, I 
came to see Jesus. I love the choir, but I want to see Jesus. I love my pastor, but I want to see Jesus. I got some gifts, but I want to see Jesus. I came to worship, and I won't let go till I see Jesus. I won't give up my praise till I see Jesus. I won't stop bowing down till I see Jesus. I came to worship, and I want to see Jesus. They came to worship, and worship was incomplete until they had an encounter with God. We need to understand every Sunday morning, your worship is incomplete until you have an encounter with God. But once you have an encounter with God, then you won't go back the same way you came in. And see, that's what's wrong with some of us. We come in broken, and we leave broken. We come in wounded, and we leave wounded. We come in frustrated, and we leave frustrated. And the reason why those things happen uh, is because we have been distracted in our worship uh, and we didn't have an encounter with God. Uh, but when you have an encounter with God, uh, baby, you can't leave the same way. Uh, let me close it out like this. Uh, the Bible declared uh, that when they left that baby, uh, an angel of the Lord showed up uh, and said, don't go back uh, the same way you came. Uh, I stopped by to tell you uh, this Sunday morning, uh, when you have an encounter with Jesus, uh, you might might come in broken, uh, but you go out whole. Uh, you might come in wounded, uh, but you go out healed. Uh, you might come in with frustration, uh, but you go out in peace. Uh, why? Because I've seen my God. Why? Because I've seen my King. Why? Because I've seen my Savior. We've come to worship. And when you come to worship, Ain't no devil in hell stop you. When you come to worship, there's no distraction on earth that will keep you. When you come to worship and you worship in spirit and in truth, I guarantee you, you'll leave better than you came in because you've been touched by the one that can change your life. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you.